the fruit. Now open your Bibles now to Joshua chapter 4. Joshua 4, 19 through 24. This morning I'm going to share a message with you coming from my quiet time. See, I've been doing my quiet time from the book of Joshua. And this spoke to my heart, so this has created an impression on me from the Lord, so I decided to share it with you. Amen. But also, on a side note, I encourage you never to neglect your quiet time. Never neglect your quiet time, your time alone with God, in the reading of the scriptures. Why? Because that's when God speaks to you personally. That's when God specifically speaks to you and individually speaks to you and tells you exactly what His will for you. Amen. So never neglect your quiet time. But as you are trying to locate the book of Joshua, which is actually the sixth book of the Bible coming from the beginning or after the first five books of the Old Testament, but let me ask you this question. Are you blessed? Oh, yes. Are you blessed? Yes. Oh, yes. Now the word blessed or blessing, I believe, is the most favorite word of all Christians. Because we love to be blessed. We love blessings, don't we? Oh, yes. Why? Because it gives us this joy. But what does this word blessing mean? What does blessing or blessed or be blessed mean? Well, this word literally means this, to be happy. So if you read the word blessed or blessed, or even the word beatitude, that means to be happy. So that means God wants us to be happy, so He blesses us. And here we are indeed blessed because God's word says that we are saved sanctified, yes. and soon to be glorified. Come on, but the question is this, why would God bless us? Have you ever thought of that? Why would God bless us? And your answer should be, because God loves us. Well, Amen. that's given. Amen. You're right. Because God loves us, He would bless us. But think about it this way. Even if we love someone, we don't always bless them or make them happy. Hmm. For instance, when our children ask us something that we don't agree, we say no. We make them unhappy, oh, and yet yes. we still love them. Oh, yeah, right? Right. Right. So I still have that argument of why would God bless us? Hmm. I mean, he should not be obligated to bless us. Why? Because we are merely His creation. Right? In other words, we are merely God's Creatures. So why would God bless us? We are like only His employees. Come on, man. Right? Just like at my work, every year during hospital week, my CEO would give us a free lunch on one of those days. Free lunch. Can you imagine feeding thousands of employees once a year? Now, he doesn't have to do that. That's right. He doesn't That's have right. to feel obligated to do that because we are his employees. We get paid anyway. Come on now. So whether we get lunch or not, we still get paid. Mm -hmm. So God does not have to be obligated to bless us because we are simply his creation. Mm -hmm. Why would God bless us? We certainly cannot demand That's right. or That's right. mandate Him to bless us. Why? Because we're not equal to Him. Imagine this. If you decide to go to the White House and see President Trump, and you say, President Trump, today I want to sleep in the White House. Hmm. You know what he's going to tell to you? No. no, I do not think so. Okay. Why? Because we're not equal to Him. Okay. Perhaps if you are a president of another country, Perhaps you can sleep at the White House. Huh. Same thing when it comes to our parents. We cannot mandate or command our parents, clean my room. And your parents would say, I don't think so. That's Why? Right. Because we are not equal to our parents. That's right. That's so same right. thing with God. Why would God bless us? Why would God bless us? Here's the answer. Here's the answer. God blesses us because he doesn't want us to forget him. Come on now, yes sir. That 
God blesses us because He doesn't want us to forget Him. Why? Because when we forget Him, when we become busy, when we because of work, because of school, when we are beginning to live the dream or pursuing the American dream or we got distracted, we forget about Him. And that's when we suffer the most. That's right. That's right. Here, Joshua and the Israelites were blessed by God because God tells them, I'm blessing you so you don't forget about me. Amen. Specifically in three things. Let's all stand up right now and find out those three things that why God blesses us so we don't forget these things. Now, if you are there, say, Amen. Amen. Joshua 4, 19 and following. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, In the future... When your descendants ask their fathers, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan just what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. You may be seated. Now, contextually speaking, at this point, Moses is dead. So now Joshua succeeded him as the commander-in-chief of the nation of Israel. And under his leadership, they were able to make it to the promised land. Now, after they crossed the Jordan River, just because God miraculously parted Jordan River, or they walked on dry ground as God moved the waters to each side. Now, imagine that. God parted Jordan River. It was not a small river. Jordan River is about two miles in width and 200 feet deep. Oh now, of course, compared to Mississippi River, huh. it's slightly smaller because at the widest, Mississippi River is 10 miles in width, mm -hmm. but 200 feet in deep or depth. Mm -hmm. So here we have Jordan River, 2 miles in width, and 200 feet deep. That's still a big body of water. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yet God parted it, and they walked on dry ground. You see that in verse 22, and also in chapter 3, verse 17. But after they finished crossing the Jordan River, after the entire nation of Israel finished crossing the Jordan River, God commanded Joshua, which Joshua obeyed, as he normally did, to go and find 12 men, uh -huh. One for each tribe. Uh -huh. And then the men should go back to the middle of the Jordan where the Ark of the Covenant and the priests are standing. Get the stones there, totaling to 12. Bring it back to where they're staying and create a heap or an altar or pile those rocks there to serve as a memorial, uh -huh. a reminder, uh -huh. a remembrance, uh -huh. a commemoration in memoriam of what God had done for them. Amen. Let me just done. read that. Twelve men went to the middle of the Jordan while it's still dry and the water's on the side. They got twelve stones and brought it back to where they were staying. Which at that point, they were staying at Gilgal. And just FYI, I just thought of sharing this with you. Here is the map of Israel during the time. And notice that there is the Jordan River and there is Gilgal. They crossed Jordan River they went to Gilgal, they settled there for a while before they went to Jericho and conquered Jericho on their way to the main promised land. But at this point, this is already part of the promised land west of the Jordan River. 
But over there, while there in Gilgal, is where they created this altar made of these 12 stones to serve as a memorial for them to remember what God had done for them. He parted the Jordan River. Notice what it says in verses 19 and 20. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. Now look at verse 20. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of Jordan. Why? To serve as a memorial for them. You see that in chapter 4, verse 7. God this time to say, I have created this miracle. I bless you. This time, you're not going to forget about me. Because these stones will keep reminding you and the generation to come of what I have done for you. Amen. Now remember, in the story of Israel coming out from Egypt, in that journey from Egypt to the promised land, remember how it took them 40 years to get to the promised land? Oh, yeah. They were wandering oh, yeah. in the wilderness for 40 years. Scholars are actually saying if they just followed the Lord and stayed in the path, they could have made it from Israel to the promised land in 15 days. 15 days they would have made it to the promised land and yet because of their disobedience, why? They have forgotten the Lord. Come on now. Come it took on them now. 40 years in the wilderness. Yes, sir. Even though God blessed them, didn't, didn't He? He blessed them with protection. Yeah. He blessed them with water. On, he man. blessed them with manna, huh. the special bread. God blessed them with quail for meat and for egg. God blessed them with all sorts of blessings. And yet, the Israelites still forgot about the Lord. And they mm. suffered the consequence. And so if there's one thing perhaps that you can take home from this message is this. Do not forget the Lord. Amen. Amen. Work is not that important. The Lord is. Come on now. You prioritize your work. You prioritize your vacation. Now. You prioritize your Come pleasure. You prioritize your rest. Right. I guarantee you, right. you will suffer the consequence of it. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, we know why? Yeah. Because God sees that us, you have forgotten Him. So we don't want to forget the Lord. Amen. So this time God said, these stones will serve as a memorial of what I have done. Particularly, he said, remembering these three things. Look at the first one. That he is the blessor. God bless them so they don't forget him as the blessor. Which means he is the giver. He is the provider. He is the supplier. We give God all the glory because He is the blessor, the provider, right. the supplier right. of right. everything that we have. Yes, sir. Look at what it says in verse 21 through 23. He said to the Israelites, In the future, when your descendants ask their fathers, What do these stones mean? Let the Israelite, or tell them Israelites, cross the Jordan on dry ground. 23. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan just what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that Joshua emphasized that God did this? Amen. In these short verses, he mentioned it three times. That's right. Verse 23. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan. And look at the next sentence. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea. Look at the third sentence. He dried it up before us. He repeatedly emphasizing one thing. God did this. We should not forget Him. He blessed us yes, because sir. He is the blessor. That's right. Yes, That's God right. would use different means ways, people, on, and man. avenues to bless us. Hmm. But the bottom line is, the ultimate source of the blessings that we have, of all the things that we have, is God. Amen. Because He is the blessor. We should not forget He is the blessor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I have a blessing this past week. Come on, man. I yeah. got my car back. Yay! Yay. After 48 days,
place in the body shop, I finally got my car back. Amen. And I could say that Don Davis did a good job in repairing my car. And Progressive Insurance did a pretty good job in paying for the repairs of my car. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it is still God who is the ultimate source. He simply used Don Davis and Progressive Insurance yes, to bless sir. me. But the ultimate supplier of the blessing that I have my car back Amen. is God. Why? Because He is the blessor. Mm -hmm. God uses different means and ways but his purpose is he would bless us. Why? So we don't forget that he is the blessor. Amen. Look at what it says in Philippians 4.19. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Right there we can end the sermon. That's right. Because that is alone full of, uh, of expression from God telling us this. I am the blesser of all your needs. Look at what it says, and my God will meet all your needs. It did not say, your work will meet all your needs. Your spouse will meet all your needs. Your family will meet all your needs. Your skill will meet all your needs. He said, God will meet all your needs. Why? Because God is telling us today, I am the blesser. Once we forget that God is the ultimate source of all the blessings that we have, we're in trouble. Come on now, come on now. Just yeah. like the old saying, we should give credit where credit is due. Amen. We need to give God That's all good. the credit because all the blessings that we have came from Him. But here's a tendency. Here's a tendency. We forget Him when everything is going well in our life. Come on now, come on now. But God is not going to allow that to happen because He cares about us so much. He loves us so much. So He's still going to bless us even though we're straying away from God, even though we have forgotten that, about God. God will still bless us. You know what? With the calamity. Uh -huh. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Pastor, I, I, I think you said that wrong. What do you mean calamity? Yeah. God will, will bless you with that calamity. God is going gonna, is gonna to bless you with a problem, with a difficulty. Why? Because He wants you not to forget Him. That calamity becomes a blessing in yes, disguise. Yes, becomes a blessing in disguise. Because God knows that you are heading to the cliff and that you're going to fall over the cliff and you're gonna, your life is going to be in danger. So He would allow calamity, Isaiah 45, 7, for, to serve as a blessing in disguise. Uh-huh. Why? So you would not suffer greatly because you have forgotten about Him. Now you're probably arguing right now in your head. Well, I have what I have because I worked hard for it. No, no. It is through my own strength, my skill, my ability no, 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 no. that I have what I have all because of me. Oh, no. But let me ask you this. Hmm. Well, who gives you the strength God. to earn? Who gives you the ability yes. to earn what you have? God. God did. Oh, right. Look at what he says in Deuteronomy 8.18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Look at Job 121. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, just like our song this morning, the Lord is taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen. Amen. The second reason or way or in essence, God blessed the people of Israel is so they don't forget that He is powerful. Oh, yes. That He is omnipotent. That He is strong. Say that He is mighty. Look at verse 24. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. That the hand of the Lord is powerful. How many of you believe that God is powerful? That He is omnipotent, that He is strong, that He is mighty. Now, many of us do believe that God is powerful, but let me ask you this question. But do you realize how powerful God is? Oh, yeah. Do you realize how powerful God is? God is powerful that He created all of the universe ex nihilo. What that means is out of nothing. Come on, In other words, He created all of the universe without any raw materials. 
Come on, he man. created it by simply speaking the word and everything came to being. Come on, man. He yes, did sir. not need any raw seed or material to create everything. It's Hell just like yes. this. Yes, you know, the house behind me, behind, behind my house, has now two or three grown trees. It used to be just a plain backyard, nothing there but grass and some weeds, but no trees. But guess what? Now, it has two or three big trees. Hmm. And you're probably wondering, so what's the big deal? Where is the big deal? No one has lived in that house for years. Oh but where did those trees come from? You're probably saying, those are wild trees, those are weed trees, it, it, it grew that big. You're right. But nonetheless, how did it grow? Without any seed, without someone planting a seed or a, a tree there when it's still small. Who did that? God, God, did. God did. Because God can create everything ex nihilo, out of nothing. Hmm? You know how powerful God is? That He created the entire universe effortlessly. He did not get tired. He created everything by simply speaking it and it happens. So in other words, God did not spend so much effort in creating a universe compared to creating a bug. Come on now, come on now. He created the universe oh, as yeah. effortlessly as He created an ant. You know, God is so powerful. Have you ever thought of this? God is so powerful that He sustains and controls all of nature. Oh yeah. Have you ever thought of this? How come Earth does not tilt and move away from its axis? Huh. Have you ever thought of this? How could Earth stay in its orbit and stays in its path and it goes around the sun and not digressing to the right or to the left or perhaps drive itself to the sun hmm. so we all die? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought why all the planets are still traversing the same path going around the sun but they don't collide? Ain't that so? Have you ever thought of this? How come the moon has not fallen to Earth? Hmm. Have you ever thought how the seawater stays at the shore, but it doesn't move into the city? Hmm. Have you ever thought how we are not floating up in the air because of gravity? Come on, man. It's God. Yes, sir. Why? Because God is a powerful God. God is powerful that He gives life and takes away life. He is powerful that His enemies bow down to Him. Say it. Say but not only that, He is powerful that death could not hold Him. No. He is powerful that He raised dead people. From the grave, he's powerful that he fed thousands from a boy's lunch, dried up sea and river, healed incurable diseases, casted out say demons, it, it. stopped a thunderstorm with a wave of his hand, on, and man. completely changed a person's life like yours and mine. And yet God is so powerful, God is so oh, big, yeah. God is so vast, God say is it. infinite, and yet he's so powerful that he lives in your heart. Come on now, come on now. Do you realize how powerful yes, God is? Yes, God is powerful. No wonder He is the King, the Lord, Say the it. Almighty, the Trinity, oh, yes. the Sovereign, the Alpha and the Omega, yes. the All-Consuming One, the Great I Am, the Master yes. and the Judge. Yes. Folks, He is powerful that He is the Counselor, Redeemer, Say Savior, it. Teacher, it. Giver, Forgiver, yes. Healer, Deliverer, yes. Father, Lover, yes. all together. Yes, God is so powerful that He can be capable, accessible, available, approachable, reachable, trustable, believable, lovable, and trustable. All at once, God is powerful. Oh, yes. He's our God powerful. Yes, He is. Yes. Our God is so powerful. So let's not forget that. Oh. My God is powerful. He can fix my marriage. Come on now. God is powerful. Yes, he sir. can heal my diseases. Yes, sir. God is powerful that He can build up my finances. God is powerful. He can change a rebellious heart. God is powerful. He oh, can yes. answer prayers. God is powerful. He can save a lost soul. Yes, Our sir. God is powerful. He blesses you. Yes. So you don't forget. Yes. God yes. is powerful. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And thirdly, He blesses us so we don't forget that He is to be feared. Look at verse 24, the second part. He did this so that you might, that so you might always fear the Lord your God. Now, what does it mean to fear the Lord? Seems to me it's paradoxical, don't you think? It's kind of illogical. It didn't make sense. It's contrary because if you have a relationship with someone... Like we have a relationship with God, why should we fear Him? 
right? If you have a relationship, intimate relationship with your loved one, why should you fear him? The same point that Victor Navorsky came up with. Now, one of my all-time favorite movies, as a matter of fact, my favorite movie of all time, is The Terminal. How many of you have seen that movie, The Terminal? It's a movie by Tom Hanks. He played the role of Victor Navorsky. He was a European man who came from the country called Carcosia, and he arrived at the airport in New York, JFK Airport, but he got stuck there. Why? Because he cannot go back to his native country. Why? Because there was a coup d'etat, a military coup. Hmm. At the same time, he cannot leave the airport because he does not have the proper documentation to enter the United States of America. Hmm. So he got stuck at the airport. But the United States Custom and Immigration Agency gave him the opportunity to seek asylum huh. by simply saying this. Victor Navorsky, all you need to tell me is this. I am afraid of my country, Krakosia. And here's Navorsky's response. I'm not afraid of Krakosia. I'm afraid of this room. I'm afraid of ghosts or ghosts. But what's his point there? His point is this. Why should I be afraid of my own country? Why should I be afraid of my family? Why should I be afraid of my own people? Same thing here. Why would God tell us to fear Him always Come when on, we man. have a relationship with Him? But this word fear, or the phrase fear of the Lord, has nothing to do with being horrified, terrified, or scared of God. Like when you're scared of snake, or shark, or your boss, or coming to church. Some people are terrified coming to church. But this word, fear, or the phrase fear of the Lord, literally means this. Hear me out. Revere. Respect. Because of God's power and possession, we render Him due respect and honor and reverence. We revere Him. Someone asked me today, are we going to call you Dr. Reverend so-and-so? Please don't. Never, ever. Because that reverence is only pertaining to God. Because that is same as fear of the Lord. We respect Him because of His power and position. Oh yeah. So that means God blesses us so you don't forget, fear me. Come on now. Fear the Lord. That's well, why right. should we fear the Lord? Why should we revere Him, honor Him, or respect Him? Let me show you some verses. Look at Proverbs 9, 9 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, sir. Do you want to be smart? Fear, fear the Lord. Lord. Hmm. How about Proverbs 10, 27? The fear of the Lord adds length to life. You've always wanted to have a long life, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, besides hmm. those dieting and exercising, you might want to add fearing the Lord. Hmm. How about this one for men? For men only. Why? Because we men, we like to have the sense of fulfillment, achievement. That's why we like to work. We're driven by a certain purpose. We want to achieve a goal, don't we? Oh, yeah. That's why when at home, we're bored. We always want to be doing something, accomplishing something. But here's what God said. Look at Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. There you go. You want to have fulfillment in life? Fear the Lord. How about for women? Women only. Proverbs 31, 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Amen. You want to be praised? Oh, you want to yeah. be adored? Fear the Lord. You want to be admired? Fear the Lord. Amen. God blesses us because He wants us to never forget to always fear Him, respect Him, revere Him, honor Him. And there are many ways we can do that by faithfully participating in corporate worship like church. By gladly serving Him. Mm. By generously giving to His cause. Mm. By regularly witnessing. But the point is this. God will continue to bless you because He doesn't want you to forget to always fear Him. him. Amen. Folks, we are blessed, aren't we? Yes, sir. We are blessed. Yes, sir. Wow, and we just celebrated 4th of July. It's still considered 4th of July weekend. Isn't that a blessing that we live in this great nation with freedom? Say it. Say it. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We are blessed. You are blessed. We are blessed. We made it to church. Woo! That means we are still alive and breathing. Come on now. Come on. And I'm blessing. I have a 
blessing personally. You know, I finally am moving in my dissertation. I heard some good news this past week so I can move on with my school work. Praise the Lord. That's a blessing. Come here and ask me earlier, are you done with school or you quit already? <laughs> I said, I'm not quitting. Because God is blessing me. Oh, yeah. Here as a church, we have a blessing. Do you know that we have a potential student pastor? We've been praying for this for about three years. Come on, but man. now we have a potential student Amen. pastor. Guess what? We are halfway through the year, right? Could you believe that? Halfway through 2019. Mm -hmm. And guess what? God so far has answered, hear me out, 159 specific prayers that we prayed on Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Hey, he said, hey, How could you prove that? I have my documentation. Hey, I have my proof. So far, can you imagine 159 prayers already? Last year, two years ago, God answered 120. Yeah. Last year, 160. Mm -hmm. This year, halfway through the year, 159 specific hey, prayer hey, requests. Hey, that hey, means hey. we are on pace. Yes, we sir. are on target. To be to have over 300 answered prayers this year. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I will be here Wednesday night. I would not miss a Wednesday night because on Wednesday night, God answers prayers. Oh, we are so blessed. Oh, we are yes. so blessed. We are so blessed. Like that, like Joshua and the Israelites. We are so blessed. But we are not blessed because we are disturbing it. Come on now. We are not blessed because we earned it. We are not blessed because Say we work it. hard Say for it. We are not blessed because God is obligated to bless us. We are blessed by God. Amen. Because He doesn't want us to forget Him. Mm -hmm. I hope that you will remember that God blesses you for one reason. Mm. He wants you not to forget. Amen. 